And welcome back to this week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, Nashville Democratic State Representative Brenda Gilmore, and her daily on 1510 WLAC syndicated talk show host Steve Gill. Welcome. Nice to see you both. Thank you. I get ready for a big Labor Day weekend coming up. Bad economic news on this Friday as we tape this show. It comes out. New jobs report for the past month. For the first time since 1945, new jobs created were offset by jobs that were lost equaling zero. Really says a lot of bad things about the economy. Well, and to actually have your economy growing, you need to be adding about 125,000 jobs a month uh, to start digging out of the hole we're in. We really need about a 250,000 net jobs per month to dig out of that. You know, the 9.1 percent unemployment rate stayed firm, and the White House this week said they anticipate that the unemployment rate's going to be above 9 percent all the way through mm -hmm. next year. None of that's going to give people the confidence to go out and invest in new equipment, hire new people, and that's where it all has to start. You've got to change the mindset as well as change the underlying economics. Yeah, there were about 50,000 jobs were created, mm -hmm. but because of the laws, it, right. it netted out at zero. And I think that we do need to do something, and that's why I'm excited about what President Obama has to say about jobs. I hope that that will restore consumer confidence. I thought that there were some glimmers of hope. Uh, we made uh, some gains in going back to school. It shows that we really had some successes in that area, and I'm hoping that that will continue. And the market ended on a positive note. And the good news, as Steve pointed out, a little bit of good news, unemployment at least for now, stayed steady, didn't get any worse. Mm -hmm. We are all waiting to see what the president has to say next week. Next Thursday he unveils his job proposal. The question, I guess, does he go big, does he go small? What do you guys really anticipate him saying next week? I think he's going to say the same thing we've heard from him about seven or eight times when he's announced jobs plans times and times and times again. Uh, a year ago, when he came back from vacation, he said he was going to announce a new jobs plan. He was attacking Congress for not doing what he wanted. Uh, he's saying the same things now. The difference was a year ago he had a Democrat House, a Democrat Senate. Now he's got a Republican House and a Democrat Senate, and he's going to go before the Congress, I think, and finger point and pound the podium and blame everybody other than his own economic pop problems. That's not going to fix the problem. I think what we're going to hear is that he's going to choose some parts of what some Republicans have put forth mm -hmm. as job plans, and I think we're also going to hear that he's not going to ask for new monies that there's going to be a, a shifting around of funds and there's going to be some reductions. So hopefully that that will gain the confidence, of, again, of consumers. Unless you do like WPA projects, can the federal government really create jobs other than with incentives and those kinds of things for businesses that already exist and to encourage new businesses to hire? Well, just a few weeks ago, the White House said the president doesn't create jobs and never have truer words been spoken, at least with this president. The problem is government doesn't create jobs. You've got to get off people's backs, out of their pockets and out of their way and let the free market do that. Unfortunately, for the last three years, and really for the two years before that, when Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid took over the House and Senate, we've seen a tax on business, we've seen tax increases, we've seen the uh, regulations putting business out of work. Then we borrowed a trillion dollars from the Chinese for the stimulus plan that didn't create jobs, and some of the few jobs that it created were came, coming at a cost of 200, 400, 500,000 per job. You don't create it with government action, you create it by getting the government out of the way. Part of the problem, too, though, the White House has been dealing with the worst recession we've been in for three years since the Great Depression. Absolutely. Digging out of that is very difficult. Absolutely. And everything that I hear, the uh, experts, the uh, analysts say that actually four million do jobs have been created as a result of stimulus. It did work. Uh, I think one of the problems is, is that we have got to work with the president. We've got to put aside partisan politics and trying to worry about who's going to get elected in 2012. And uh, go for what's good for America. And we just have not seen that. There has not been a willingness to reach across the aisles and help. I think all of that discussion about debt ceiling, just really, we, we were seeing things going in a positive manner for the first time. And then when the discussions about the debt ceiling, that completely destroyed uh, consumer confidence. And we've seen things kind of rocky. Uh, also, the large corporations are sitting on, not millions, but billions of dollars of profits. We have seen uh, small businesses show a gain, and uh, actually that's where the jobs were created. But if Republicans come back and don't support this president and continue to say, let's get big businesses, uh, 
uh, reductions in taxes and all the other incentives that they're given, then we're never going to get American going again. Well, the problem is that the president had the Democrat-controlled House and Senate the first two years of his administration, and he didn't fix any of these problems. He didn't create jobs, and he didn't do the things that he says need to be done. Raising taxes, which is what the administration wants to do, spending more money, borrowing more money, isn't going to dig us out of the hole. We need to cut our spending and, and dramatically do so and give business the confidence that they're not going to be treated as the bad guys and the, as, as the enemies again. Then they'll go out and they'll hire people. Then they'll go out and they'll make those investments. But right now, when they're in the target site is, and being painted as the evil bad guys by this administration and by the Democrats, they're not going to go take the risk with their money. How important is it to change the mindset of America, to change not only creating jobs, which is very important, but to create the image that we are in this, this continued downturn? New CNN polls should ask, are we in a recession? Eighty nine percent said yes. Now, technically, we are not by the by the technical terms, but people don't care about the technical terms. To them, we're in a recession. It continues. Well, again, you look at the unemployment rate, and part of the problem is you've got 2.4 to 2.6 million people who aren't even counting as unemployed right now, who are on the sidelines. They've given up hope of looking for a job. So we have a president that promised hope and change, whose unemployment rates now are built on the fact that you've got 2.6 million people who've given up hope. Once they roll back into the job market, the unemployment rate actually goes up. Is that I part think, of his job to, the, to kind of change that around? Well, I think this president, what they've been trying to communicate, and I will admit that sometimes it has not come across to the American people, is that there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance between looking at the real rich, the extreme rich, those who make, even make over 200000 or a quarter million dollars, and making sure that they are paying their fair share instead of putting all of the burden on the working class and the poor, as it has been done in the past. There has to be a recognition from the Republicans that you have to have balance between readjusting our tax structure, which is outdated, and also reducing uh, our expenditures. And in the past, our tea parties have just wanted to do cut, cut, cut. We will never, we will never get out of this recession but just cut, cut, cut. We won't cutting. spend our way out of it. And the top 10 percent pay 38 percent of the tax burden while collecting 20 percent of the income. That is more than your fair share. It's the bottom half that pays nothing. We have to cut spending rather than raise taxes. We could double the tax rates. We'd still have a half billion dollar, a half trillion dollar a year deficit. If we doubled the rates, we could tax the, the heck out of the rich, the so-called rich, as Brenda points out, and we still wouldn't balance the budget. You have to cut spending. Well, and you know what we've seen in the last couple of weeks is the billionaires have even said, we want to pay our fair share. They so can. when you they have, can always write a check. They can so, send more in. <laughs> so when the, when the real, you know, rich, the billionaire says tax us, then I think that that's what we need to do. That's coming from Warren Buffett, who is behind on 10 years of taxes. His company is behind on 10 years of taxes. Warren could pay what he owes, and then he could start paying more if he wanted to. Bill Gates, all these guys, there is nothing that prevents them from paying more. The Treasury could accept it tomorrow. It's easy to talk it. They aren't doing it. Well, we will never really see any uh, real successes in reducing our deficit until we bring our soldiers, bring our men and our women home, reduce some of those huge expenditures that we have on two uh, un funded wars, and also the Medicaid pro program, program. Don't forget Libya. We got into that one without congressional approval. Yeah, <laughs> the a Medicaid pro program that President Bush also approved, unfunded again. Until we can do something with those three things, we're not going to see any success. Are the Democrats calling to cut Medicare and Medicaid? This would be news. We'll no. know what the president has to say <laughs> next Thursday. Steve Gill, Brenda Gilmore, appreciate your time and your insights. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.